This video will discuss the rho vibrational spectrum of diatomic molecules using the rigid rotor and harmonic oscillator models. So we have our diatomic molecule here, two atoms of mass m1 and m2. They're connected at some bond length r, and they have some spring constant k in the harmonic oscillator, which determines the potential energy, 1 half kx squared. They have a reduced mass, m1 times m2, divided by m1 plus m2, and the moment of inertia, resistance to angular acceleration equals mu times r squared. In the previous video, we derived that the rho vibrational energy levels in these models are going to be E of nj, quantum numbers n and j, both integers starting at zero and going up to infinity, equals h nu times n plus one half, plus h bar squared over two times moment of inertia times j times j plus one. We can also rewrite this energy in terms of some constants omega e and b bar, the vibrational constant and the rotational constant in wave numbers in inverse centimeters. e n sub j equals Planck's constant times speed of light times the quantity omega e times n plus one half plus b bar times j times j plus one. Here the, rota the rotational constant b and vibrational constant omega e. Omega e is equal to 1 over 2 pi times speed of light in centimeters per second times the square root of our spring constant divided by the reduced mass. b bar equals Planck's constant divided by 8 pi squared speed of light in centimeters per second reduced mass times r squared. Okay, so we're interested in transitions between these rho vibrational energy levels, energy of rotation and vibration. So what is our selection rule here? The selection rule is that delta n, the change in our vibrational energy level is plus one, so we're absorbing a photon, this is an absorption spectrum. And delta j, change in our ro rotational energy level can be plus or minus one. Remember that our vibrational energy levels are much, much bigger than our rotational energy levels, so this is always going to be a positive result. So delta E is going to equal n plus E of n plus 1, j plus or minus 1, minus E, n, j, accounting for these selection rules. So we have two different cases here, one where delta j equals plus 1, one where it's minus 1, and we'll look at delta E plus and delta E minus. So delta E plus equals HC omega E N plus 1 minus N. So we have N plus 1 plus 1 half minus N plus 1 half. So that gives us the value that results down here. We're left with an omega E there. Same case in delta E minus. For the vibrational part, we just get an omega E. Plus B bar, then we substitute in J plus 1 and then subtract j for the quantity j times j plus 1. So j squared plus 3j plus 2, j plus 2 times, or j plus 1 times j plus 2, minus j times j plus 1 is minus j squared minus j. In e minus, we have j squared minus j minus j squared minus j. So what we have is j times j plus 1 times j minus 1 times j. So the j squareds cancel in each case. We have 3j plus 2 minus j is 2j plus 2. So we have, and we have a minus j minus j, just a minus 2j there. So for delta E plus, we have E equals, delta E plus equals hc omega E plus 2b bar times j plus 1. Delta E minus equals hc omega E bar minus 2b bar times j. So the energy of our transition is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon we're going to absorb. Um, speed of light equals wavelength times the frequency of that photon. Frequency equals speed of light over wavelength. So inverse wavelength, 1 over lambda, is equal to the frequency divided by speed of light. So we're taking our energy and we're dividing it by hc to get the value in wave numbers. So delta E equals hc omega observed, 
or a mega bar observed. So this delta E plus and delta E minus gives us two different cases. This case is going to be what we call our, our fundamental transition plus some energy. And the minus case is the fundamental transition minus some energy. So what we get is two distinct branches. One, the R branch, where the increase we increase above the vibrational transition, omega E. One, the P branch, where we are less than the vibrational transition energy. So what we get is this kind of double wing-shaped spectrum here. And this is based off of what the occupation of rotational states is at room temperature. So the shape of this actually comes from statistical mechanics. Some of you might look into that in your stat mech, or if you go more heavy into spectroscopy, some of you will look into that, some of you won't. But the shape of this comes from the fact of how the energy levels are separated and what the degeneracies of the energy levels are. So here, this is a transition from J equals zero to J equals one, J equals one to J equals two, two to three, three to four, four to five, etc. And here we have the transition from J equals one to J equals zero, two to one, three to two, four to three, etc. as we go down the P branch. So our frequency or our inverse wavelength of the R branch is the fundamental the vibrational one plus 2b bar times j plus 1 starting at 0. And because the p branch are going down, we're going from j, we're going from uh, j to j minus 1. We have to start at 1 because we can't go below 0. So this is omega e minus 2b bar j. This is our rho vibrational spectrum. We get a p branch and an r branch. Each of those uh, Peaks is separated by 2b bar, just as they are in the microwave spectrum, but we get this different shape to the peak now because we have this uh, vibrational transition plus whatever the energy of our rotational transition is from either going up one quantum in rotational quantum number or down one quantum in our rotational number.